Have you ever thought about what makes a good multi-effects guitar processor? Well, I have, and I narrowed it down to four use cases. Practicing at home, recording both at home and in the studio, rehearsing with a band, and playing live shows. And of course, it should sound convincing enough every time. In this video, I'll try to figure out how Line 6 Pod Go performs in all of those scenarios. Everything we'll talk about applies to both PodGo and PodGo Wireless, because the only difference between the two is a built-in wireless transmitter. It's not a bad idea to tune the guitar before practicing. I'll be tuning this PGD Woodford, and to activate the tuner, I'll press and hold the tap tuner button. There are a couple of different types here, and any of them gets the job done. It doesn't necessarily need to be muted. I usually use speakers when practicing, but depending on your relationships with your neighbors, you may want to use headphones. In that case, Podgo has a quarter-inch stereo jack headphones output that you can use. And it's very loud! Yeah, that's much safer. <laughs> do you practice with a click? Well, I do, and I wish Podgo had a built-in solution for that. It comes with this PodGo Edit software, and it could easily have a metronome feature, but again, that would mean the unit has to be connected to a computer, so it is not a standalone solution. So if I'm out of my studio, I'll just stick to my phone, which can also be connected to the auxiliary input if you need playbacks or want to hear everything through the headphones. If only my phone had a headphones output. Crap. Well, <laughs> let's downgrade. Yeah, that should do. Before I hear anything, the auxin has to be enabled in the global settings. Connecting the unit to a computer, of course, makes it more flexible. You can have your playbacks, your metronome, or whatever you want. With some tweaking, it is absolutely possible to make PodGo sound very beautiful and pretty convincing when you play guitar alone, uh, without any playbacks. Uh, probably not with factory presets, though. These are set uh, to sound very close to my multi-amp setup, and uh, as a matter of fact, lately I find myself practicing using my HX Stomp, which is identical from the sound perspective to PodGo, more often than with actual amps. So, as a device for practicing, I would give it 8 or 9 out of 10, only because it doesn't have a built-in metronome. When recording in the studio, it's good to have a device with balanced outputs, and PodGo is equipped with balanced jack outputs. 
Although it's better to have XLRs, because they are easy to work with and you don't need any adapters, but Go doesn't have XLR outputs, but it has something better, especially for home recordings. When connected to a computer over USB, it turns into an audio interface and you can forget about your built-in sound card. You can connect speakers or studio monitors to Podgo and use it not only to play and record guitars, but also to edit your recordings, perform reamping and do anything else you usually do with your computer, watch movies, listen to the music, you name it. Your computer will see Podgo as 4 ins, 4 outs audio interface, with first two inputs used for recording processed sound, inputs 3 and 4 for dry or completely unprocessed sound for later reamping, for example, uh, which can be done through outputs 3 and 4, and uh, outputs 1 and 2 will be your DAW or your computer output going right into the main output connectors on the back of the unit. The only thing that is missing here and prevents it from being the best USB audio interface for guitarists is a microphone output, but when it comes to guitar, the whole signal chain is here, so it's all in one solution. With that said, from the recording's perspective, I would give it a 9 out of 10, give me XLR outputs and that would be the highest score. For the following track, I have connected PodGo as an audio interface, started the playback on my computer, which was mixed together with my guitar sound right inside of the unit, and recorded the sound out of main outputs. Rehearsing with a band. I see two scenarios here. You either have your own room with your own gear in it, or you rent a room and only bring your guitar and effects with you. I do that a lot, actually. And uh, in both situations, you have to make yourself audible to the rest of the band, which means make yourself loud. That could be a flat range, flat response speaker. In that case, you would just connect it to the main output and have your cabinet simulations and everything done by PodGo. Or that could be your regular guitar amp and you could use a four cable method if you actually want to use the sound of the amp mixed with your effects. Or you can use the amp output, which can be configured to take the sound from right before the built-in cabinet simulation and connect it into the effects return or power amp in over your amp. So the PodGo will shape the sound and the amp behind you will just make it louder through a guitar cabinet. And here's a real life example of how it actually works. I have connected PodGo to my Angle Iron Ball Special Edition using four cable method. The guitar comes in here, this output is connected to the front input of the amp and these two cables are connecting the effects loop of the amp to pod go. This is the send from the amp and this is the return back into the power section of the amp. I'm not in a rehearsal room, I'm at home, so I'm not using a cabinet. Angle Iron Ball is connected into two nodes Capture X right there and Capture X is connected to my audio interface and to my computer such as you can hear everything. In the beginning of my signal chain I have an overdrive and a fuzz. These two blocks are disabled and here is the point where the sound goes into Angle Iron Ball. Here I have enabled the effects loop and I have a choice between clean and uh, lead channels. The sound returns into PodGo and I have two more things here, a delay and a reverb. The amp is on clean, let's give it a go.
traveling to the rehearsal room and back is an important part of the whole process, and the more portable your effects unit is, the better. The weight of this thing is 2.4 kilos or 5.4 almost pounds. It's not gonna fit into the front pocket of a guitar bag, unfortunately. A pedal board bag like this one though shall be more than sufficient. It might be more practical to use just a normal backpack. Let's see if that's gonna work. It works perfectly, actually. And there is space for the adapter, cables, and some other things. Mm -hmm. Another thing that adds to the overall portability is this cute handle on the bottom of the unit. It's pretty comfortable to carry it like this, and uh, it won't slip away. So, for rehearsals, I would give PodGo maybe a 7 or 8 out of 10. First of all, because it's not the most portable device, it's definitely bigger than this one. And second, you cannot control other things using PodGo, like switching the channels of your amp, for example. But we'll talk about switching in the next chapter. Playing live. Well, if you have a big car and you carry everything with you, including the PA, then you can be very flexible with your connections and sound. But at bigger events, like festivals, everything is usually provided and you only bring your guitar, maybe effects, uh, an amp. You enter the stage and the sound guy gives you either a mic or a DI box. What are you gonna do? I assume you would want to use all your nice sounds with cabinet simulations that you spent hours tweaking to perfection. That means going from the main output right into the mixing desk and a microphone won't be useful. The most obvious choice would be to use a patch cable to connect the main output with the DI box. Did I mention PodGo has balanced outputs? And the DI box is connected to the mixing console with a balanced cable. It's obviously more efficient to get rid of the DI box completely and connect a balanced cable to a balanced output. Sounds good in theory. In reality, though, connectors don't match. Of course, there are workarounds. XLR to quarter inch stereo jack adapters or cables like this one. But it would be so much easier if PodGo simply had XLR outputs. Monitoring can be a bit tricky. If you want to hear all your post-amp effects, modulation, delay, reverb, together with cabinet simulation, you have two options. A wedge in front of you, with the sound guy having an absolute control over your monitoring mix, which is not always a good idea. Or use the amp out on the back of the unit, connected to a flat range, flat response speaker somewhere behind you. And you are the one who controls its volume, not the sound guy, which usually means a better and more comfortable sound on stage. You can also reconfigure the amp out and take the signal from right before the built-in cabinet simulation. Go to your regular guitar amp with a regular guitar cap, however, you will not be able to hear any stereo effects, because in PodGo those can only be placed after the built-in cabinet simulation. So yeah, it's kind of flexible, but at the same time there's a couple of limitations. Controls are strong with this one, you can do a lot with all these built-in foot switches, and it's really good to have this pedal. In the normal mode it works uh, as a volume pedal, But once you press it hard enough, it turns into a wawa. Just like Lan6 Helix devices, PodGo has three levels of switching. The top level is presets and banks. We've got four presets, A, B, C and D per bank. And there are 32 banks. Then we have the edit mode, so you can kind of go inside the preset and turn on or off individual effects blocks. 
And the snapshot mode is something in between. It's like having four different states of the same pedal board, where you can turn on and off multiple pedals with just one button. Foot switches can be assigned to different functions, and there is a good choice of parameters they can control. If that's not enough, Podgo has another input for an additional expression pedal or a double foot switch. With all that said, I think it's a strong 7 from the live performance perspective. Well, I think that's it for today. Or did I miss anything? Let me know if I did in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my future videos someday soon. Thanks for watching and goodbye everybody.